Hi, I'm Lee Riley, and in this video, I'll show you how to edit and use automation in Nuendo, and how they function very similar to Pro Tools. So let's take a look. Let's start by checking out Nuendo's editing tools, and for a direct reference, I've opened Pro Tools and placed it right underneath. There's a range of tools to use, the first being the Object Selection tool, which can function like the Time Grabber tool, but with a twist. Check this out. I can select or grab objects or events to behave just like the standard Grabber tool. Now, just by holding Shift, this behaves just like the Object Grabber tool. Not just that, it's also a trim tool and a tool that applies fades and will group select with a left click and drag with the mouse. Next up, we have the range selector, which is basically the selector tool. But this one allows two selection areas for editing. And this tool can act like the separation grabber. The combined selection tools option in Nuendo behaves just like the smart tool. When I place my cursor towards the top of an object, it becomes the range selector. And at the bottom, becomes an object selection tool. As an added bonus, the range selector tool can take on two more attributes. First, the Sizing Moves Contents option allows you to move audio within the object, like this. Or the Sizing Applies Time Stretch option will speed up or slow down your audio. To use those options in Pro Tools, you would have to utilize modifier keys or use the TC Trimmer tool. The Pencil tool will draw in level changes similar to clip gain changes in Pro Tools. The Split tool will actually separate an object, whereas you would most likely use the Selector tool and use B here. The Glue tool will either bond objects together, which would require you to consolidate clips in Pro Tools, or can work the same as Heal Separation by removing an edit. The Zoom tool can work by left-click dragging or by single-clicking to zoom in and out. The Play tool will simply play back or audition your audio from where you left-click for the duration of time that you press down. Not quite an equivalent to the Scrub tool, eh, but I'd say they were related closely enough. Let's look at some more comparisons here between the DAWs. Knowing the way the tools behave will allow you to edit and move objects around your project. I can move this object here loosely down onto my edit track with the object selection tool. If I wanted to move it but had to keep it at the same place in time, I would have to use my constraint modifier key, command, and drag down. This is constraining in Pro Tools where you use the control key. The two DAWs work identically when snapping an object to the cursor. More on this in a minute. If I wanted to move part of the object onto this track, I'll use the Range Selection tool. See the hand or modified icon? And drag the selected area downwards. All the other functions work the same, like Copy, Cut, Paste, and Delete only with slight differences in terminology with Snap and Snap Type. Snap can be turned on or off here. When on, Nuendo behaves like Grid Mode, snapping objects to a set grid line. When switched off, Nuendo behaves like Slip Mode and moves the objects freely around the timeline. Behavior is also controlled by choosing a Snap Type we have a lot to choose from here. Let's start with Grid Relative. 
If I change my grid type here to one second, it should be a bit more obvious. The object snapped to a position relative to a grid line. Snap to events in the window is quite unique. If I have a marker placed, I can snap an object to it. Also, if you drag an object close to another object, its boundary will become magnetic. Dare I say that this is a little similar to shuffle mode? However, shuffle does not work like shuffle mode, but instead rearranges differently. If I grab this object here and move it across the other one, they will trade places in the timeline. Cursor is great for snapping objects straight to the cursor. Constraining, like I mentioned before. The nearest equivalent to tab to transient would be snap to zero crossing. With this activated, Nuendo will automatically snap to a zero crossing point when the cursor is clicked on an audio object. To nudge in the window, you can simply use the same key commands as in Pro Tools. Numeric plus or minus. But there is something handy. If I went too far and wanted to reposition the object back to its origin, I can simply click on the T key. Nice. Fades are very similar between the DAWs. A fade in or out can be done with tools like this. Crossfades, like this. Or I can set up identical key commands to fade in or fade out. I can even batch fade the same way in Nuendo. But Nuendo has a party trick here by allowing me to batch fade in the toolbar. Check this out. I'll select, then type in the fades that I want. Let's compare basic automation functions between the two DAWs. Automation can be a complex subject to cover, but to keep things simple, let's generalize what can be automated. Virtually all mixed console parameters that can be adjusted during playback. For example, faders, mutes, panning, send levels, and bypassing. Staying in the mix console, all Nuendo plugins can be automated. Opening up this reverence reverb, I can adjust many of these parameters here, as well as automating preset snapshots. Automation can be applied to various types of tracks, including audio, group, effects channel, and VCAs. And these can include functions such as mute, volume, pan, send levels, and bypass. Automation can be written in real time by adjusting parameters during playback. Just simply click on write, press play, and adjust the required parameter. Stop playback and review your changes. Note how read is now lit by default. Your written track automation can be temporarily suspended here just by clicking. This is track by track based. Or you can globally suspend all your automation by clicking here. And by opening this window, you have many options that I can show you in a more advanced video. You can determine how you write by choosing a global automation mode. These are pretty similar to the Pro Tools automation modes. Automation can also be written graphically with various tools and could just as easily be edited by the same tools or by scaling or adjusting by tilting and the usual copy, cut, delete. Let's try a quick example to put things into perspective. I'll click on the Edit Channel Settings button on this track, revealing a six-band EQ. 
I'll grab the high cut and pull it all the way down to 50 Hz. Then let's put the track into right. Press play and off we go. Okay, let's stop here. If I close this window for a minute and click here, an automation lane is revealed. We now see the high cut is on. And if I click the append automation button, the high cut frequency lane is shown. If I zoom in a little, you can see the written automation. I'm going to place a reverb directly on this track and do one more thing. Here we go. Let's start the track back from the beginning. Press play and move this slider right here. Stop and then click here to change the view from high cut on to insert one reverence mix. The written information is there, so let's get out of write mode and take a look at the plugins when we play this back. I think I want to change the reverb amount in the intro. Let's edit this lane here a bit. Now try again. There we go. I'm Lee Riley, and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video series. And I'll see you in the next one.